For those of you who watch Pardon the Interruption or PTI, we're kind of innovating or borrowing from them a little bit. What's our topic for today? What is the most important issue in magic today? Okay, I'll go first. Who am I? You are Evan Irwin. Well, I got four words for y'all about Warren Instigator. $30 Mythic Rare, okay? Get yours with while they last. We might not, we were gonna be out of stock on this thing in about two weeks. All right, you're right. Who, who am I? You are Michael Flores. Of course I'm Michael Flores. I've been Michael Flores since the early 80s. The 70s at this point. Right now, the most important magic issue today is Five with Flores' is Flores Rewards. If you go to Twitter and follow me on Twitter. Oh, you're on Twitter, Flores, I didn't know that. Who am I? You are Brad Nelson. <sighs> oh, sweet nicotine. So yeah, losing. Patrick, why don't you tell me what that's like? I, I, I have no idea. That's the most important issue in Magic. Oh, sorry, the most important issue. Yeah, I don't know. I'm too busy winning. <laughs> You're up. Who am I? You're Gabriel Nassif. The most important issue for, uh, that's not the Gabriel <laughs> voice. What's the, how do you sound like Kermit? <laughs> how many, is this, right. who am I? You are Todd Anderson. The most important issue in Magic today is Wizards of the Coast raping, wait, can we say rape? Wizards of the Coast is raping us. We can't take it anymore. We need to get together, unify, start signing petitions. If we stick together, we can overcome this menace. We're beat. Who am I? You are Brian Kibler. Oh, well, that's easy. The most important issue in Magic today is my exposure. It's been over a year since I won a Pro Tour. That's just far too long. Who am I? You're Gabriel Nassif. Mark, why aren't you coming to Pro Tours anymore? <laughs> When you used to come to Pro Tours, I top aided all of them. It's been months since I top aided a Pro Tour. The most important issue is the amount of citizenship I can spend in this country, the amount of time. <laughs> I already. Who am I? You are Luis Scott Vargas. Okay, I'd say uh, the most important issue would be uh, getting ahead by sticking together. <laughs> <laughs> Who you got? All right, uh, who am I? Mark Rosewater. Hmm, I'm looking forward to being Mark Rosewater. This is an interesting restriction. Restriction three creativity. <laughs> is it's that right? Very, yeah, it's something I learned when I used to write for Roseanne. Back when... <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that concludes our Talking head segment. I love watching it, and I'm glad that it takes place. First of all, the one they did a few years ago, that worked out really well. Like, they didn't even just get a winner. It ended up being like they have four great, like yeah. four people who have either contributed or continue to contribute to this day. That I mean, that was awesome. So yeah, it's great for them. Definitely. And I think it's great because it helps illuminate to the rest of the community what it takes to be a good designer. Yeah. The path, because let me tell you something. Working in Watsi R and D is actually as good as you think it is. It seriously is. <laughs> it's the most fun job in the world. It's unbelievable. You sit around and hang out with the smartest, most fun people like Mark Rosewater or Richard Garfield or Eric Lauer or whoever, Aaron Forsythe, and you, you have these discussions where you're learning so much because they're just so smart and worldly and experienced where they've done things where they've been making games for years. And these are some people that can share some pretty awesome stuff with you and to be sitting designing magic cards. So clearly for the winner, it's, it's incredibly, it's awesome for the winner. But I think even for anyone who participates, which is many, many times more people than the, the number who will win, it's, a, it's really important because it gets you doing different kinds of exercises and it gets you thinking, thinking in different ways about magic. And that's always helpful and specifically with, with regards to design, I mean, you learn so much, so much about the magic cards and what they can do and what they're, meant, what they're supposed to do and what's Jerry fun Taylor's and what right. isn't. His article about how bad everybody's designs generally are? Yeah. So right. If they if they're actually serious about design, it's one thing if you just want to make some cards and just, you know, that's what you think is fun. But if you're trying to make cards to show people, look, this is some stuff that I think would be cool for Magic, 99% of people make the same types of mistakes over and over again. You sure. Know? They try to make cards that are too complicated. They, they make cards that are clunky and not elegant. They bleed the color pie too much. They make cards that are uh, only interesting when they're too powerful. Um, but it's like it's like any other creative enterprise, really. I mean, for every for every great movie, how many how many terrible movies are there? For every mm. for every great artist, how many struggling artists that that aren't really that good are there? And but I think that the fact that you're letting so many people try it and letting and then seeing let, see, watching the cream rise to the top, I think I think that's that's the important part of the process. Not everyone that fails, but everyone that just 
realize it's, it's well. They're really failing. talented at it. It's not even failing either. Just being part of the process. There are so many people yeah. that I want. There are a number of people who competed in this great designer search who did not advance to whatever the current round is that I think are going to be professional game designers or already have the makings of professional game designers and this will serve them so well for sharpening their craft you know becoming better at what they're doing because a lot of these people are really good at what they're doing but you gotta be great and yeah. maybe you're really talented maybe you have a few areas where you already excel at maybe there's even just you're awesome in a lot of areas but you have a couple key weaknesses being a, being a designer involves a lot more different elements than I think a lot of people realize like for instance, this year I think it's great that they have this more community-based approach where you're engaging in other people. You know, there's, there's the yeah. wiki, there's actively campaigning in per, you know, on the internet, on Twitter, on Facebook, on with articles or whatever, where you're talking about your ideas and working with other people because, because part of being a designer. Yeah, so much of what you're going to be doing if you do get to Wizards is going to be working as part of a team. Also, I mean, sharing your ideas. It's one thing to have a great idea and take ownership of that idea, but it's also relinquishing ownership of your ideas. How, how do you take feedback? How do you let someone else take your idea and run with it? How do you create ideas that are easier for other people to take, to take and run with it as opposed to these little niche ideas that only you can work with. I think all those things are important skills that are emphasized in this great design search as opposed to the last one with the community stuff. You don't want to just have the card you submitted be the card that's in. Yeah. I, mean, I know they used to have a policy a long time ago in the Stone Age is where you got, you know, where you got bonuses or whatever if your cards made it in or something like that. But it was like they've gone away from that whole thing because they realized the incentive you want to incentivize people to actually make yeah. the best product, not just get their ideas in, you know? And if you made, if you did nothing but make everyone else's designs a little bit better, you, you would be doing a lot. Or you could be doing a lot for, you know, for game design. It's just like article writing. No matter how good your design is, it could be better. You could always be a better designer. And people now that are, like, there's a lot of people who are upset about, uh, like, they know they're good designers and not making it as far as they'd like. I'd see this as a benefit, an opportunity. I mean, Ken Nagel, he didn't win. Didn't stop him, did it? No. I don't know, I just think that this is such a good thing for the game too because outside of getting a few good, great designers who are being found and discovered and so on, it, it's such a great way to educate so many more people, you know? Uh, personally, I would. I'd give all, all the Grand Prix for one Pro Tour. And the reason is you spend a lot to travel to all the Grand Prix, assuming you're traveling. So like, from the perspective of all the people that go to their local GP, of course it, it's, a, it's a horrendous trade. But for me personally, you'd save all that travel expense. And the Pro Tour, that's what it's all about for me. It's the big show. I just love, I mean, you, you're, you spend more time preparing for them because they're, they have a bigger prize support. So you, you want to spend more and you're rewarded for spending more time on it. So I mean, I, so for me, that's, having an extra one of those is, is the dream. I mean, yeah, we could we could actually even not have any PTs either. We could all just have jobs, right? Like that way we wouldn't have to travel at all. We could, I mean, we could, you know, just focus on making money. Oh wait, yeah. See, yeah, but to me, to me, I like I like the GPS. I don't do very well at GPS. I do way better at PTs. My EV would be so much better if we just had more PTs. Right. But I like the fact, the fact that GPs provide a stepping stone to, that's like another layer removed from the PT because there's only 400 people on the, 450 people on the Pro Tour at any one time. GPs allow there to be thousands of people competing in professional level events. And that's important and, and you certainly still have, you'd have, you'd have, to, you'd have to have something at a lower level. Like a GP? Well, PT, well, PT couldn't be the only tournament. I think it, it, the Star City Open Series provides, provides that to I some think there's extent. Something, there's something to be said about the fact that like these GPs are getting record attendance numbers thousands of people becoming in a bigger and bigger event. I mean, it's, I love going to different events too, but I love going to True, more events. Yeah. Going to four PTs, instead, yeah. going to five PTs instead of four would be great, but going to all these GPs, I love having an opportunity to go to all these. I, w I like there being so many different events. Yeah, but for me it's all, I mean, the marquee events, that's what it's all about. When I, when I think of golf or tennis, I think of the four slams. You know, you got your, your French Open, your US Open, whatever it is, the Masters in golf. I wouldn't, t I wouldn't give away the Masters in golf for more small tournaments that are open entry that everyone can play. I mean, people, but would people, you get rid of all the small tournaments in golf? For a we're, fifth we're not getting rid of all, we're getting rid of one, the Grand Prix series, the Grand Prix series. You, you can't get rid of everything. That's what I'm saying. Though. People are still going to play golf. They're still going to be open tournaments. I want what's best for the game, even if it's Well, that's very generous of you, but the, the question but here is what would you do? The question is what would you prefer? I would prefer to have it be whatever's best for the game because I'm interested, like to me, I think it's my best interest for the game to be doing well so that five years from now, 
everything is better for everybody. Well, I think I think that you're exaggerating the impact that Grand Prix have. They're, they're they're nice. They're important. They're not essential to the success of the game. You you could have. I think the Open Series would become even more popular. Thing, things would rise to the surface to take the place of the Grand Prix to some extent, and then you have an additional Pro Tour, and the Pro Tour is, that's the big draw. What do you do in Europe? There are no tournament series in Europe. Yeah. No proxy vintage. Right now, <laughs> right now there's, right now there's no, there are no, you know, I mean there's the bizarre Mox and vintage event, but there's no like, open series, but why is that, why does that have to be the case five years from now? It doesn't. Yeah, I mean they can have Grand Prix five years from now. <laughs> Hello, I am Misha and I'm Sven and we are here to educate about um, European magic, how we do things. We do things a little differently, but magic is very popular in the European Union. We recently hosted Pro Tour Amsterdam. And in the top 8 of Amsterdam we had Kai Bude and Marine Liber representing Europe. Ah, they're very strong players, but we do things a little differently here in Europe and we'd like to educate you about these changes. For instance, we know a lot of the proxy. No proxy, but you can play as many copies of Repeal as you like. And these changes, they make Magic very popular. Our smallest Grand Prix have over 2300 competitors. We have so many players, we can afford to give everybody in Top 8 a television set and a PS3. Oh, as well as their choice of Frexian or Mirren t-shirt. Hmm. Our best players, some of them are Gabriel Nassif, Olivier Ruel, Antoine Ruel, Raphael Levy, uh, Guillaume Fotapa, Guillaume Matignon. You don't even have to be from France to be good. Some of us are Martin Jusa. <laughs> now we dance. dance.